The principle in neuroscience says that nerve cells that fire together wire together. You keep thinking the same way, making the same choices, demonstrating the same habits, uh, creating the same experiences that stamp the same networks of neurons into the same patterns, all for the familiar feeling called you. And you do that for 10 years on end, you're going to begin to hardwire certain patterns in your brain that becomes your identity. And by the time we're 35 years old, it kind of becomes fixed, right? And psychology used to say that you can't change that, but we now know that you can. Henry David Thoreau had probably the greatest definition of success that I have ever heard. He said, if you advance confidently in the direction of your own dreams and endeavor to live the life which you have imagined, you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. It will chase after you if you can place into your imagination what it is that you would like to attract and begin to feel it. That which you feel yourself to be, you are. And you are given that which you are. So assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your wish. And your wish must be realized. So live in the feeling of being the one you want to be and that you shall be. Inspire yourself into the right direction. Look, find things to latch onto, hook on to things that inspire you, fill your eyes and your soul with them, and know that this is your power. This is the advantage you have over everyone else. You fill yourself up with things that inspire you and fuel you day after day after day. See, if you're playing it safe, you're not gonna win. If you're playing it safe, like that old saying, you know, you were taught when you are a little girl, better to be safe than sorry. Well, that's a bunch of crap. It's not better to be safe than sorry. It's by trying things that you figure out how far you can go. You got to get outside the box. Like it's reported, Edison tried 3,000 ways before he built the incandescent light. He, he said he didn't fail 3,000 times. He said there was 3,000 different steps to building a light bulb. Well, there's different steps to get to where you're going. And I really do treat winning and losing exactly the same. I do not let it upset me. So as you begin to look at this decade and affirming that this is your decade, as you set goals that will make you stretch, that will bring out the best in you, as you begin to remove the negative, toxic people from your life, as you decide to take some chances in life, and that's one of the things that's very important. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you cannot be happy. If you can't be happy, then what else is there? This is time for a little truth. Maybe you need to become much wiser than you are at the moment. You need to become stronger. You need to have better health. Maybe you need a little coaching to really become the person I want to become. I'm going to have to have some coaching. Physical coaching. Spiritual coaching. Developing skills coach. To be the influence you want to be, you've got to build an incredible reputation. What kind of person must I be to attract all that I want in my life and the people that I want and the opportunities that I want? You knock on the door and opportunity opens. You must stand there as a very attractive person or you may not be invited. One of the most mysterious and unique phrases that Jesus ever used, here's what he said. I stand at the door and, and if you opened the door, would you probably invite him in? This extraordinary person. You say, wow, yeah. And he said, if you invite me, I'll come in, sit down talk things over for you to be that kind of attractive person that if you knocked on the door of opportunity and it opened and you stood there would you be the kind of person that opportunity would say come right in and sit down and let's talk about the future what kind of person one of the major reasons why goal setting doesn't work for some people is that they become bogged down in the how this is especially true if the goal is a stretch they want something quite different from their current experiences However, is that we don't need to worry about the how. We just need to concern ourselves with the... With, but if you do get entangled in the detail of how your desires might come about, you immediately close down those millions of channels through which they can reach you. The how is not important. What is important is that you plant the seed of desire. 
Nourish it with clear visualization of the ripened fruit. Water it with sincere faith. But leave the means to universal mind. Open up your mind. Clear out the channels of thought. Keep yourself in a state of receptivity. Gain a mental attitude in which you are constantly expecting good. It is these positive expectations that are so critical to success. When looking at the tiniest building blocks of life, scientists were astounded to discover that the particles behave differently depending on what the scientists observing them expected. It's the same in your life. We will rise or fall to meet our expectations, or those others have us. No doubt you will have heard of the self-fulfilling prophecy. But do you know who first coined the term? It was a sociologist called Robert K. Merton. In his book, Social Theory and Social Structure, he states, the self-fulfilling prophecy is, in the beginning, a false definite of the situation, evoking a new behavior which makes the original false conception come true. This specious validity of the self-fulfilling prophecy perpetuates a reign of error. For the prophet will cite the actual course of events as proof that he was right from the very beginning. In other words, if you make up your mind about something, then you immediately influence your behavior and ultimately your results. Whether your assumption is true or not is irrelevant because the belief that it is will alter your behavior to bring about a, a reign of error that vindicates your initial assumption. So, forget about the how Collier reminds us, your part is to impress upon mind your need, your earnest desire, your boundless belief in the resources and the willingness of universal mind to help you. In other words, expect the best and it will do the rest. So you have to constantly pour energy into your own life to make sure that you're making progress to your goals if you're going to eventually achieve success. And the only way that you're going to be able to do that is to have a growth mindset. Now, really simply, a growth mindset is that you believe that your talent and intelligence are not fixed traits, that you can get better at something as you put time and energy into getting better at that thing. It's what I call the only belief that matters. The only belief that matters is that by applying time and energy into something, you will actually get better at it. Now, once you believe that, Everything in your life downstream of that gets better because now you know, oh, I messed up at this thing, I suck at that thing, the world is trying to stop me from doing that thing, the world is effective at stopping me from doing that thing. A word, all I need to do is go and get better and I can outperform people. As Kobe Bryant said, and this has become my favorite quote in the world, booze don't block dunks. Now, what did he mean by that? He meant that no matter what, you can get so good that people can't stop you. People were paid millions of dollars to stop Kobe Bryant from scoring points, and yet, he scored 81 points in a single game, just by getting better than other people. Getting better than other people requires you to have a growth mindset, that's the growth part, you're going to get better, so that when you fail, and you will fail, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, and it's gonna be embarrassing, and it's gonna hurt and all that, but when you fail, if you believe, oh, failing means that I'm a failure, because my talent and intelligence are fixed traits, there's nothing I can do to get better, you will stop. Why wouldn't you? It's the only thing that makes sense. But if, on the other hand, you believe that, oh, I can get better at this, I'm not good enough yet, but I can get good enough by applying time and energy into getting better. So now you'll apply that time and energy because you believe that it will yield the outcome that you want. And that is why it is so critical to get your mind right so that you can run that loop of the physics of progress.